Hi everyone. So today I want to read to you from The Law and the Promise, Chapter 5, Subtle Threads. And where I feel called, I will again give my commentary and from uh, also what I know from the teachings from Seth, Bashar, all the other greats, in my humble opinion, the other greats. And um, yeah, enjoy, 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 enjoy. And I trust that you will get from it what you need. Also, if you'd like to work with me, check the description. And if not, then you are super welcome here as well. Let's go. Chapter 5, Subtle Threads. All you behold, though it appears without, it is within. And your imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. Blake. Nothing appears or continues in being by a power of its own. Events happen because comparatively stable imaginal activities created them, and they continue in being by virtue of the support they receive from such imaginal activities. So what Neville says here is that you're actually constantly repeating a certain image a certain thought and that's why what you see can continue to be the part which imagining the wish fulfilled place in consciously creating circumstances is obvious in this series of stories you will see how the telling of one story of the successful use of imagination can serve as a spur and a challenge to others to try it and see one night A gentleman rose in my audience. He said that he had no question to ask, but would like to tell me something. This was his story. When he came out of the armed forces after World War II, he got a job that gave him take-home pay of $25 a week. After 10 years, he was making $600 a month. At that time, he bought my book, awakened imagination and read the chapter the pruning shears of revision as you know like if you don't know neville then you're like what 25 dollars a week (laughs) this was a long time ago i don't know what the equivalent is but i'm pretty sure that it is like let's say 600 a month will be equivalent of i'm just gonna go out on a limb here yeah (laughs) let's say five thousand dollars a month Um, Through the daily practice of revision, as set forth here, he was able to tell my audience two years later that his income was equal to that of the President of the United States. So through the daily practice of revision. I'm interested in this story too, guys. I don't know if I know this. In my audience sat a man who, by his confession, was broke. He had read the same book, but he suddenly realized he had done nothing with the use of his imagination to solve his financial problem. He decided he would try to imagine himself as the winner of the 510 pool at the Caliente racetrack. Ah, I do know this story. In his words, in this pool, one attempts to pick winners in the 5th through the 10th races. So this is what he did. Oh, so this is what I did. In my imagination, I stood, sorting my tickets and feeling as I did so, that I had each of the six winners. I enacted the scene over and over in my imagination until I actually felt goose pimples. Then I saw the cashier giving me a large sum of money, which I placed beneath my imaginary shirt. This was my entire imaginal drama. And for three weeks, night after night, I enacted this scene and fell asleep in the action. Dude had persistence. That's, uh, <laughs> that's some dedication right there. After three weeks, I traveled physically to the Caliente racetrack, and on that day, every detail of my imaginative play was actually realized. 
The only change in the scene was that the cashier give, gave me a check for a total of 84,000 instead of currency. After my lecture the night this story was told, a man in the audience asked me if I thought it was possible for him to duplicate TK's experience. I told him he must decide the circumstances of his imaginal scene himself, but that whatever scene he chose, he must create a drama he could make natural to himself and imagine the end intently with all the feeling he could muster. He must not labor for the means to the end, but live imaginatively in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. One month later, he showed me a check for $16,000, which he had won in another 510 pool at the same Caliente racetrack the previous day. This man had a sequel to his most interesting duplication of TK's good fortune. His first win took care of his immediate financial difficulties, although he wanted more money for future family security. Also, and more important to him, he wanted to prove that this had not been an accident. He reasoned that if good luck if his good luck could happen a second time in succession, the so-called law of percentages would give way to prove for him that his imaginal structures were actually producing his miraculous rea this miraculous reality. And so he dared to put his imagination to a second test. He continues, I wanted a sizable bank account and this to me meant seeing a large balance on my bank statements. Therefore, in my imagination, I enacted a scene which took me into two banks. In each bank, I would see an appreciative smile meant for me from the bank manager as I walked into the establishment and I would hear the teller's cordial greeting. I would ask to see my statement. In one bank, I saw a balance of $10,000. In the other bank, I saw a balance of $15,000. My imaginal scene did not end there. Immediately after seeing my bank balances, I would turn my attention to my horse racing system, which through a progression of 10 steps would bring my winnings to $11,533 with a starting capital of $200. <laughs> He's pretty specific, eh? <laughs> I would divide the winnings into 12 piles on my desk. Okay, so he goes on, continues to tell all the specifics of how he did it. And I'm going to skip that because there are a lot of numbers and I don't feel like tripping over the, speaking out the numbers. Two points of interest most profound to me were that by seeming accident, I had marked two winning tickets identically and also that at the end of the ninth race, which was one of the major winners, the trainer attempted to scratch the horse, but the stewards denied the trainer's request, AJF. So you see everyone and their mother is involved in getting you your wish fulfilled. <clears throat> if and when you imagine correctly for the thing you want like you always imagine correctly the question is do you imagine correctly for the thing that you desire and not for its opposite how subtle were the threats that led to his goal results must testify to our imagining or we really are not imagining the end at all so it's either you're imagining the end or the opposite right like you're always thinking something are you thinking and feeling that you are safe, that you have enough money, that you have more than enough money? Or are you thinking and feeling, oh my God, everything always, like with regards to money, I always fuck it up. There's always a bill waiting for me unexpectedly that I cannot pay, blah, blah, blah. Only you can tell this. And it's really good to dig within yourself, right? 
to know it because then you can start to change what your auto response within yourself is because you are always thinking something you are and if you have been imagining in the right direction and you are getting bills it doesn't mean anything has gone wrong what it means is that it's still the old story showing itself and pretty soon the new story will be showing itself so do not worry because the point of power is always now and if you keep continuing to tell yourself the new story to feel the new feeling that belongs with the new story you will succeed hands down promise i continue ajf faithfully imagined the end and all things conspired to aid his harvesting his mistake in copying a winning ticket twice and the steward's refusal to allow the trainer's request were events created by the imaginal drama to move the plan of things forward to its goal. Chance, wrote Belford Bax, may be defined as that element in the reality change, that is, in the flowing synthesis of events, which is irreducible to law or the causal category. Oh my God, did anyone get that? (laughs) So what he's trying to say is that there is no, well, no, he's not trying to say it. So what, what I am concluding from what he is saying, because he is saying it, he just says it in a very flowery way, is that there's no such thing as chance. That chance is actually something coming together in the perfect way, um, because it had been created somewhere a synthesis of events in the flowing synthesis of events hey and also a realization that i just had is that everything that we experience is always part of like a hero's journey it is always an exciting movie we are never in a boring movie we're always in a movie that there is something the matter we want something we start to desire it it always starts off good and and jolly then something happens and it's not so good and jolly anymore then we desire the good and jolly and then we go and find all of these teachings and then we make an effort and then we do and then we do and then we persevere and then we get the prize And that's a good movie, isn't it? And there's always a villain in a movie. There's always a good dude or heroess. uh, Not good, I meant hero or, or heroine in a movie. And so all the people that are in your movie that you are now perceiving as uh, villains or assholes or whatever term you want to use, they're all part of the, of this of this script right so don't take it too seriously see that this all this is all part of a script and just use what you got you're a god you are we are gods and we can create whatever it is that we want and use it use what your mama gave you or use what god gave you right to live wisely we must be aware of our imaginal activities or at any rate of the end which they are tending we must see to it that it is the end we desire wise imagining identifies itself only with such activities that are of value or promise well however much man seems to be dealing with a material world He is actually living in a world of imagination. When he discovers that it is not the physical world of facts, but imaginal activities which shape his life, then the physical world will no longer be the reality and the world of imagination no longer the dream. Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? 
from morn to night, my friend. So this was chapter five, Subtle Threads. And what I would like to end and will end with is this. Make sure that you spend enough time in your imagination. Make sure that you keep repeating yourself however you do it. You can do it by putting a reminder in your phone. Imagination is the one and only reality or whatever words you want to use. And so every time that that reminder pops up, you know and you feel like, oh, this is where my focus should be. Not to the material, everything you can see, touch, touch, taste, smell, hair, world. Because that is a slippery slope and you know that. Because you're going to think and feel and prove to yourself that what you see out there is real. And that you are at the effect of it. That you're a victim of your rea reality instead of a creator. So really make enough time to spend inside. And I would say do it in the morning for sure before doing anything else. Do it somewhere throughout the day, a couple of times, one time. It depends a bit on where you are in your, in your journey. Maybe this is a completely new journey to you. And I would say remind yourself more often and definitely do it at night before you go to sleep. Be aware where you are at with regards to your vibration, with regards to your thoughts and your feelings. And if you want to have and if you want to create an amazing life experience continuously, then this is discipline at first. You just have to do the work. Just do the work and it will become easier. Also, it's your choice, right? What do you want? You came here to discover that you have these powers. We just came here to remember who we really are. It is all a game. It is all a game. So this was it. I trust that you enjoyed it. And before I go, I have interviewed um, a friend of mine. And she is really, really, really good at creating financial abundance for herself. And you might want to see this interview from a person's perspective that is doing this on, let's say, a daily basis. She's not so much into Neville. She is more of the Abraham Hicks uh, clique. And... In this interview, she says this one thing, which I believe is what is the common denominator between all the people that find it really easy to create financial ease for themselves. I will put the interview up somewhere later this week or the beginning of next week. So keep an eye out for that. And that's it for now. Thank you for listening and watching. See you in the next. Peace.